what is growing on. So this video is gonna be on Jim, the human planter. Um, Jim roughly plants about 25,000 soil blocks a year by hand. Um, uses some really high tech tools for this one too, guys. Stay tuned. Jim, doesn't the rain destroy all your beautiful soil blocks? You know, if right after I move them up, if I know there's like a heavy thunderstorm coming in, I'll bring them in. Um, I used to try to cover them, it's easier to bring them in. But like on a rain, any of the rains we had recently, especially after the like, you know, five or six days into it, the roots hold it together and the seam in the soil block still separates. Um, if you let them grow a little too long, they'll cross more likely because there's dirt between, but it's still, I mean, it's still a good healthy root system because it hasn't wrapped. Is that that new spinach again? Mm, that's the new spinach, that's space. You can see that, that's the red. Same exact leaf, what's the difference? Well, so, it's not that, see how the red stem there? Yeah, yeah. And this has the green, so this is space, which I like, it's got a bigger leaf. Um, but I've been experimenting with three different kinds of red, and I, find, I think red tabby's the winner. That's the one. Or Beaujolais, but look, I'm still trying on Beaujolais to see. Who are you? You're going too deep, huh? Well, this is, you know, remember I say inner plant, so these are broccoli going in. And I'll leave, you know, a good space because Arcadia broccoli will, <laughs> you know, pretty much 16, 18 inches on center. And then I stagger them in and out a little, and then I can slip a snow apple turnip, which is this. So they were direct seeded into an inch and a half block, and they're probably. 10 days old there. Wow. So my thinking here was with the uh, um, tomato. Morning. Morning. So these are kind of a, <clears throat> these trays everybody wants, they're kind of a pain to get out of the first ones, but so that's a, Nice soil block, Arcadia broccoli, that was sowed the 9th of January. So we're looking at three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. I mean, look, talk about a nice seedling three weeks old. Wow. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, they're just starting to come out. So, I mean, it's perfect timing. And I wouldn't want to let these go longer than another six days, because then they'll really be different. <laughs> and then I just usually lay them out staggered and you know I don't measure anything you know and sometimes they're not too even but the whole idea is to so I do that kind of stagger so there's an in and out and again this ain't a oops I lost this ain't a fast system compared to the guys that I don't know they got that little thing they stand up and drop them power planter and everything else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't want to be a machine operator. I want to be a gardener. I think that says a lot right there. A lot of farmers today don't get out of the tractor, Jim. Oh, I know, and I don't, I mean, and the thing is, it's such a colonial system because, you know, we think we're this, you know, independent, you know, farmer on the land, but you, <coughs> You can only sell your crop to a few people. You gotta buy your machines from these people. <coughs> and then you gotta buy all the money for the machines for these people. And you know, it's not so independent. But I mean, they're growing food, <coughs> but. You're quite dependent when you're relying on the, you know, c commercial industrial fertilizer system, you know? Oh, no doubt. You're, there, it's a colonial system. We just don't see it that way. But you know, the whole idea that <coughs> You know, we're feeding the world with that system, supposedly, right? We're feeding the world by killing it. And that can't be a good thing. It's not gonna last forever. This is feeding the world and making the soil better at the same time, you know? So this is a thing that can last, you know, 40 centuries like it did in Japan or China, I guess it was. Yeah, no, it's regenerative, you know? I mean, even to sustain today, Jim, is to keep the system that's not working, you know? Exactly. Just sustainable really means nothing. Nope. Yeah, we gotta yeah, recalibrate how we use language for sure. But the whole theory here now is, so we're looking at, this is like a modified keyhole bed. Anybody familiar with permaculture? You did that little keyhole where you planted 
tall stuff on the back that you harvested once and then stuff you harvested intermediately in the middle and then stuff you harvested daily in the edge and so that's all I do with this tier so this is the tall crop but then I tweak that and oh, did you just say you're designing this like a standard landscape gym tall stuff by the house and you're kind of working your way out almost <laughs> you know there's some you know theories on that but it's you know there's a reason for that because of shade and you know microclimate because of that so it's a similar idea so that was a had a foundation but you know there is function here as far as food instead of just beauty you know and I don't have to go around with a hedge trimmer and cut these all square and round and but it's beautiful too I think that's what really counts yeah. yeah I think that's where your standard landscape background is coming in you know yeah no doubt about it but you know and there's the whole thing about you know, I was watching that Justin video with uh, Mark Shepard okay and you know he was talking about how he figured out or designed the agroforestry system by looking at you know the edge of the road in his climate because you know that was an open space by the road and then it tiered in right and I think I'm doing a similar thing here looking at you know what gets the light and is easier to harvest by planting in those similar ways yeah I liked his one did you hear it did you watch that I did yeah the, the idea that slavery was internship <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. That's a good term. I mean, I like I a lot of Mark Shepard stuff. The uh, the stun method. Yeah. Sheer total total other neglect. I mean, kind of. You know, yeah. You do that, you know. Well. Almost. I mean. No, it's the idea that you tune a system that can, you know, doesn't have to have all this care. But you know, in any kind of annual system, you're going to have to care. But the time you spend is it worth what you receive? And you know. I'll say it one more time before I stop saying it. Oh, there's a weed. Oh, a little bit of weed. Yeah. No, um, busted. I see three more down there, Jim. Oh, yeah. They, see, I've been digging these out since the beginning. But usually I try to trace them. That one Jim's got low jack for these things. Happened. Right down to the root. But, um, you know, the idea that I took a heavy freeze and I'm eating just like it didn't happen. Whereas, you know, the perennial polyculture in a subtropical area tends to stop producing for quite a while after a major freeze. I think he's talking about me. Well, no, it's just like, oh, I don't like to do the work. <laughs> yeah. All right, so they're laid out. This is true, so if I don't want to come over here and buy a share from Jim and I want to eat all winter long, this is where it's at. I got it. It is, but I mean, you got me. I know. And that's what the whole deal is, right? I mean, we've got to rely on... So that's how on, I can pull it off. I know Jim. We rely the, on the people that can do something well um, and go visit them and we do what we do well. Littler blocks. Yeah, these are the inch and a half. These are, again, hard to get out of uh, the first one. And these have probably been in a little longer than they should. So ideally, I'd like 12 days on them, and now they're almost 20. Whoa! That one slid by, huh, Jim? Well, you know, they kind of slowed down with that cool weather, so... And I was waiting because I wanted to interplant, so sometimes you don't get optimal. So these are more... Oh, look at that root structure. But it's... You, that, so that's where it wrapped on the plastic, right? It kind of came this way and went up, but in here it didn't, so... The end ones. And then all I'll do is put those... And now I've doubled my production out of that by using a, you know, they'll, in 20 days, they'll be out. And they'll be as big as that one I was eating. Which is, that's just incredible. It's almost Snow miraculous. Snow fast, huh? Yeah. How much do they sell for at market, Jim? Um, you know, once I realized the greens are so good, I went from $2 a bunch of three to $3. So they're a buck a piece. Yep. Wow. How many you got in a tray here? Well, there is, I think, 72 blocks, but there's three in a block. So there's three dollars there. I know that guy that commented about gold-plated vegetables. Did you see that? Yeah. Yep. Did you see my reply? No, you responded. I, do, I don't do it. I but I said, you know, I usually don't, you know, reply to the doubters. But I hate my veggies being called 
you know, expensive. And then I, so I actually listed, if you want to go to that comment, what, how many I sold that day, at what price, and what it equaled. Did so. he respond back, or did that No, he up? didn't. <laughs> it's usually what happens. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got a right to think of what they want, but I just, you know, the perceptions on some of this stuff is kind of out of hand. Because it's amazing, I mean, I, you know, I worked long yesterday, but I came home with 800 bucks for one day of work. But How much did you have to pay your employees? Zero. Zero? How much overhead did you have yesterday? What oh, was rent? <laughs> probably a gallon of gas to get there, right? A gallon of gas? That's three bucks. Not too Every bad. little bit counts. How much in seed did you uh, have invested into yesterday? No, it's hard to say. But Four well, bucks? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. Um, it's a little of everything. But yeah, if you, overall, something like that. Not a lot. I guess yesterday's work will cover the water bill this month, Jim? I don't have a water bill. I know. But I do have a knee pro possible problem. You notice I never get up, but these are killer. So Carhartt's got holes that you can slide a knee pad up into, and so I can just stay on my knees all day and not stress. It helps them out a lot, huh? Yeah, that was a game changer, because I think my knees are gonna start going like my brother's. I think, we'll see. You know, I keep drinking that chaga tea too, I think that helps. And more turmeric too, that'll lube turmeric, up the Turmeric, yep, you know? that's in there. And then what, we go get the auger after you lay these out and blow some Oh, I got there. it right here. What do you mean? The gas-powered tools in your back pocket? Yeah, I did right. use a gas-powered tool this year, you saw it. It was that, what was it? Oh, the rotor teller. I didn't get here in time with oh, the camera, man. guys. <laughs> but I, that was the hardscape. Didn't touch the garden with it. Jim is talking about his shell driveway. He actually rototilled that to kind of get the weeds up and it basically brings the shell up to the top for you, right? Yeah, the shell that had been kind of buried. All right, so I'll probably finish that with another different kind of broccoli. This was all Arcadia, but I'll plant this out since I'm already here. Yeah, people always ask me why I don't sell plants, you know, seed soil blocks. I always want to buy them, but, you know, so that, that actually has four, so there's four dollars there. If I sell that for, you know, 30 cents, that's crazy. And, that makes sense, yeah. you know, that turns into one two and a half pound broccoli head, which to me is worth 10 bucks. That's kind of gold plated, but I mean, four dollars a pound ain't crazy. And then it'll turn into another five or six pounds of Florets, which is another, you know, 20 bucks. So you're looking at $30. Why would I sell that for a dollar? And they think that's too much. So grow your own. You got it made. Uh oh. Oh, there they are. Don't want to. You know, that's the only time I do wear gloves is when I'm sticking my hands in because it wears everything out. And these are great, these nitro coated. I mean, you can. Little cheapies, yeah. Yeah, you can pick stuff up. You know, the most gloves you can. And I'm not a babyer when I'm planting. I just stick them in, push. Because you got to plant so many. Are you using the high and tight method, Jim? You know, the thing is, I could leave that there and it would grow. What? I've done it before, especially with irrigation. You can just leave that on the top and it'll sprout and finish. It might not do as well as if I had it in the ground. So the fact that if I only get it, you know, halfway in like that, it's great. You know, but that's just what I've learned over the years. Alexandra is all about. Pretty. Yeah. Say goodbye to the babies. Make sure they're tucked in. And again, people think I'm nuts because I'm that's what I'm planting in. But, I mean, if we pulled up uh, a scallion around here, it will be... Attached to the roots, right? Yeah, it'll be actually in a chunk of wood like that. It'll go in it. Carrots will go through it, which is funny. And a lot, that's why I do kind of sift the carrot bed a little, because they'll have to go around most of the time. Push it down. And then they ain't straight and they're harder to pull. 
when you say sift it by cleaning off the top a little bit before you did that? You know, I didn't want to go into that, but yeah, there's I got this little sifter thing that I, it's just some hardware cloth. Um, it just you know makes that carrot bed a little easier to harvest. That much more loose. Yeah. Well, not loose, but less of this. So either the carrot will hit this and go through it, or it'll go around it. And when it goes around it, then trying to pull it's hard. There's more of them guys. That's about ease of harvest, not just pretty carrots. Yeah, look at that. I think that's amazing. So I never working for you for free? Well, that's the body, right? The chitin. And that's full of chitin. And that just shows up. Hundreds of thousands of them. Pretty amazing. High tech, low tech, Jim. Back to the future. Is Maine calling you yet? Yeah. When are you going to visit? Well, I'm trying to decide. It's either early March or late March. Probably late. That way I can get the greenhouse going. Syrup might be finishing, but she's got that on under control. She don't really need my help. I mean, that's pretty much just planting in a bunch of wood chips. People don't believe it. I mean, it works. Oh, another weed. What? You know what that one is? That's at the tree, isn't it? No, that's Biden's. Ah, I hate Biden! Really? That small? Yeah, they gotta start somewhere. I thought they were a little rounder than that, though. Oh. Yeah, more permaculture people will be saying, ah, you don't like Biden's? Oh, and since we're on, are we on film? Oh, we're on film. We're on film, okay. So, I said the nasturtiums are weeds. I didn't really mean it. I use them all the time. I think they're great. They're not a bad weed. I understand. We cleared that one up. Huh? Yep. All right. All right, Jim, I'm gonna let you get back to planting. I'm all right. Go get the drone, get these guys some updated footage, continue uh, pounding dirt. Cool. Can I get a... Bam. Oh, boom. All right, so Jim starts nearly 25,000 of those soil blocks every year using that high-tech tool to actually put them in the ground. Lots of more nuggets of, uh, I think, useful information in this video once again. Like Jim said, nasturtiums are not weeds. They just grow like weeds here because they constantly reseed themselves and he doesn't have to replant them. The fact they come back like that, they almost have like an invasive tendency, but obviously that's a good invasive that he wants in the garden. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna shut up and let you get on to the next one. Um, if you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that bell to stay notified. Most importantly, you guys can do this. You can do this on your own at your own house. You can do this for a living. You can do this for a hobby. If you wanna know more, check out some of my other videos with Jim or we even have a masterclass. Most importantly, get out there and pound some dirt.